and read a verse of scripture. The scripture will be coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and we'll be beginning at verse 7 from the New Century Version of the Bible. And it reads, Say we have this treasure from God but we are like clay jars that hold the treasure. This shows that the power is from God and not from us. So we have trouble all around us, but we do not give up the hope of living. So we are persecuted, but God does not leave us. We are, but God does not leave us. We hurt sometime, but we are not destroyed. God, we come before you to tell you thank you. God, we thank you for what you are about to do in this place. We pray that the Spirit of God will have its way like never before. God, I decrease and I ask in you that you would de increase in me. I ask God that you would just forgive us of all of our sins, God, so that all of our praises and our prayers and our worship, God, will reach heaven. God, we so desire, God, that you will move in our lives. And we tell you thank you. And I pray that you will give us ears to hear and a heart to receive your word. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. You may have your seats. And this morning I want to minister from the topic, chosen to be hidden. Chosen to be hidden. So my assignment this morning is to give you a word of encouragement. A word to simply remind you of who you are in God. And to encourage you to let you know that the, the gifts and the abilities and the talents that God has given you, he placed them within you. And so you have to understand that what God has placed in you, we cannot take those things for granted. Because many of us become lost trying to find our purpose in life. And there are people that come, become so discouraged because it's taken so long for the purpose to be fulfilled until they give up on searching for the purpose. And so and then we have a group of people that are, that are looking for purpose. And they are secretly looking for other people to validate who they are. And so there are times in our lives to where we are looking for people to validate us and we're looking for people to give us a stamp of approval and what it is that God has called us to do. But there are times in your life when people won't approve you. There are times in your life when people are not there to validate who you are. And don't become discouraged when, you are, when God is taking a little bit too long to reveal his purpose to you. Because a lot of times we can give up by searching for purpose. Because we can be looking for other people to give us what it is that we need. And give us pe get looking for people to tell us who we are to become. But nobody is to tell us who we are to become. We should know who we are if we get into the scriptures. We can know who we are if we begin to search the word of God. Because we cannot look for man to validate us. We have to look for our validation and that validation comes from God. Because there will be times in your life when people cannot see what God sees in you. Because people will look at you and they will judge you based upon your outer appearance. And then they will say that you're not ready to be this. And you're not ready to do that. You're not ready to be on your own. You're not ready to have your own business. They will look at you and judge you based upon what you look like. And based upon what you look like on the outside. Because just like David when God sent Samuel to Jesse's house to anoint one of his sons to become the next king. Samuel was looking on the outer appearance and, and God was telling him that I'm not looking on the outer appearance I am looking at the heart 
And so there are times in your life when people will look at you and they will judge you and they will forget all about your heart. Because now they are looking at what you got on and is your skirt too short or is your pants too tight? Because now they are trying to judge you based upon what you have on. And yes, there is modesty. You're supposed to be modest, but at the same time, it's what is in my heart. Because you have to be able to clean out the, get out the inside of a person and to be able to clean them up in the inside and we'll worry about the outside later. And so that's what we fall short sometimes in the house of God because we begin to judge the person that comes through the doors. So we cannot judge the person that come through the door and sit in the pew. And so when they sit in the seat, we're supposed to love them because God said, by love and kindness, have I drawn you? And so if God can draw us with love and kindness, who are we to draw somebody? Who are we to be able to judge somebody else? So when somebody come in the house of God and they don't look like us, we're not supposed to judge the person. We're supposed to love the person and help the person and pray for the person. That's what we're supposed to do. So because we cannot judge the outer appearance, we're supposed to judge the heart. And so God was telling Samuel that you cannot that peep that man is the ones that that judge the outer appearance and I am the one that judged the heart that I'm the one that knows the heart and so when Samuel began to try the oil on the other brothers the oil would not respond and the oil did not respond because they wasn't called for the purpose and the oil did not respond because that's not who God had called him. And so Samuel began to think that God had made a mistake because he looked at their appearance and he looked at their stature and he began to say that surely God has called one of them. But God said that I did not call him. And so then Samuel began to ask Jesse, he said, do you have any more sons? And he said, yes, I have David. He's out there watching the sheep. And so then they sent for David and immediately Samuel knew that David was the one that was chosen because the oil of God went crazy when they went to go get David and so then David then Samuel began to pour the oil over David and the spirit of God was on him and the spirit of God was mightily upon him from that day forward and so that's why it lets me know that if I have a heart and a mind that is willing to please God and that lets me know that I don't have to overstep nobody I don't have have to backstab nobody I don't have to lie on nobody I ain't got to trip nobody up because I don't even have to compete to see who's the most anointed because if God has chosen you then the oil of God will find you and so you don't have to sit here on your job and you don't have to compete with somebody else and throw somebody else up under the bus because if God has chosen you for the position you will get the position but if God don't want you to have the position, God ain't going to give it to you. Because there are some times in our lives to where we want something that don't belong to us. So I got to make sure that I'm praying to God and say, God, I want what's for me. I don't want what's for my neighbor. I want to be chosen for that particular thing that you have for me. Because God said that he already knew you in your mother's womb. And he said that before you even came forth, he already sanctified you. He already chose the position for you. And so if God has already chose the position for you before the very foundations of the world, you ought to know that God is going to fulfill that thing in your life. But the thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to wait on God. Because there are times in our lives where we got to learn how to wait when it's uncomfortable. We got to learn how to wait when it don't feel good. We got to learn how to wait even though the burners are turned up in our lives. Because if we want anything from God, we got to know how to wait on Jesus. Because God, when God has chosen you, God will make the way for you. When God has chosen you, God will make sure that he will make a, a way for you to be able to come forth in God and to be able to do what it is that God has called you to do. But in the midst of waiting, in the midst of being hidden in your, in your chosen season, you cannot feel discouraged. Don't feel discouraged because you seemingly you're being overlooked. Because there are times in our lives where we will feel like we're being overlooked. We're being overlooked on our jobs and overlooked in the Christian world and feel like we're supposed to be so far or beyond where we are right now. But there are times in our lives and moments in our lives where God will hide you in order to develop you. 
because God will hide you in order to develop you in that place where he has chosen you to be because just like David he had to go through the process even though he was chosen to be the king he didn't say that okay now that I'm chosen to be the king now I'm not going to tend to the sheep now I'm going to sit on the throne that's not how it goes you have to go through the process of being chosen and so when you are being chosen you have to learn how to go through the process when Joseph was chosen he had to color for coat but yet the favor of God was on his life but yet he had to go through the process and so there are times in your life when you have to go through the process even when it's uncomfortable you have to go through the process even when you don't feel good you got to go through the process even if it's not popular you got to learn how to go through the process because there are some times in your life to where you can be hidden and you can be hidden in such a way to where you're in a lonely, secluded place. And so you can feel all by yourself and feel like nobody understands where you are. Nobody understands what you are going through. Nobody understands the tears that you cry. Nobody understands how you wet your, your, wet your pillow at night. Nobody understands what you are going through. You can walk around and people cannot see the hurt in your countenance. Amen. But see, the thing about God, God knows right where you are. God knows that hidden place that he has you. He knows that place where he is covering you for just a time as this. He is covering you for this season in your life. But at the same time, we have to know how to endure the trial and endure the sufferings that we face in our lives. Because there will be times where you feel like you are forgotten about and nobody cares about you. It will feel like you're out of sight and out of mind and nobody's even worried about where you are and nobody is caring about what you're doing and how you're feeling. Nobody picked up the phone and called you. Nobody texted you. Nobody sent you an encouraging message and nobody sit there and encourage you. But God will put you in a forgotten place. But God will never forget about you. Because you can be hidden in such a way to where you can walk in a room full of people and yet everybody is talking and everybody is laughing around you and you walk in there feeling empty you're walking in there feeling numb and feeling like you're invisible and people are walking by you and not even recognizing you and you're looking trying to figure out who in the world did God send to encourage me because God I'm on my last limb and I don't even know how I can make it and God I need to be encouraged I need somebody to pour into me God I need somebody to just give me a word and let me know that everything is going to be all right. God, I just need a word. Say, God, I just need to know that if everything is going to be all right. God, because if you do anything in my life, I just need to know is everything going to be all right. Because when God put you in a hiding place, God will make you feel like you're overlooked. When God put you in a hiding place, God will make you feel like nobody cares about you. But God cares about you. The Spirit of God cares about you. So don't you allow the enemy to make you feel that nobody cares. Don't you allow the enemy to make you feel that you're all by yourself. The devil is a liar. Come on and give God some praise. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I shall be delivered. I shall be set free. I am chosen by God. I thank you for choosing me. I thank you for choosing me. I thank you for choosing me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because when people don't even understand, people don't understand what you are going through in your life. They don't understand why you're hidden and nobody can see you. And you're trying to figure out how in the world God gonna bring me out. How in the world God gonna reveal me to the world. How in the world they can't see my hurt and see my pain sees you don't you think that God ain't looking at you don't you think that God ain't with you God is with you and God will be there for you but God is building you up and he's strengthening you and he's gonna get the glory out of your situation oh God we tell you yes oh God we tell you yes God we tell you yes God we tell you yes God do it in me God work the work in me. God make me better. God make me better. I'm chosen for your glory. I'm chosen for your glory. I'm chosen for your people. We're chosen for your people. Don't you forget that you were chosen. Don't you allow the enemy to make you think you ain't chosen. Oh, praise him. Oh God, we praise you. Oh God, we praise you. Oh God, we praise you. But I got to remain faithful. But we, in the midst of you being chosen, and the things that are happening in your life, and with the enemy trying to mop the floor with you, and 
ready about to make you lose your mind. You got to know how to remain faithful in the process. And you got to say, God, I'm going to remain faithful no matter what it feels like. I'm going to remain faithful no matter what it looks like. I'm going to remain faithful regardless of my prayers that's being hindered. Because there are times when you can pray to God and God don't move in your life. And you're praying to God and you say, God, I'm praying. God, I'm trying to live right. I'm trying to do this thing right. I'm praying to you. But God, what is my purpose? Am I suffering for a reason? Yes, you are suffering because there is an assignment that is upon your life. There is an assignment that is on your life. That nobody can fulfill that assignment but you. Because God has certain people that you're supposed to reach. Because if you've been through anything, you've got an assignment. It does not matter how seasoned you are, how old you are, how young you are. There is an assignment upon your life. Because if you've been through being hurt, you know what it feels like to be broken. You know what it feels like to be divorced or whether it's to lose a child. No matter what it feels like, you have the ability to reach back and to grab somebody else. Because that is your assignment. Your assignment is to reach back and to grab your brother. Your assignment is to reach back and to grab the next generation. Your assignment is to make sure that you break, you heal the broken hearted. That you encourage the broken hearted. That you will strengthen the ones that are too weak to fight. Because there are people that when the enemy comes in their lives, they begin to get weakened. Because there's one thing after another thing after another thing that happens in their life. And the more things happen in your life, the more it tells you down. And the devil will try to tell you down until he destroy you. Because he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. So the devil don't play fair. So what the enemy does, he tries to destroy you. But you have to make sure that you have a relationship with God. Make sure that you have a relationship with God. Make sure that you have a relationship with God. I cannot stress that enough because there has been times in my life to where I felt like giving up. There's been times in my life where I felt like taking my life. But if it had not been for Jesus, that grabbed a hold of my mind and pulled me back into a right relationship with him. So I thank God for pulling me back. I thank God for allowing me to be chosen. I thank God for the sufferings that I've been through. I thank God for everything that happened in my life. I thank you for the pain. I thank you for the pain. I thank you for the hurt. I thank you for the disappointments. I thank God for everything I've ever been through. Because there's things that you go through in your life. It's building up your character. It's building you up for what God is trying to take you. Because God is trying to take you to that place. That place where he has ordained for you. That place that you have that you will find purpose. But right now you feel like you're covered. You feel like you're secluded. You feel like you're isolated and you all by yourself. You feel like nobody cares about you. Who cares whether I'm at church or not? God cares and we care too. Because there are times to where we have to learn how to endure. We got to learn how to dig in. When things get tough, we got to dig in in prayer. When things get hard, we got to dig in in prayer. When things start going wrong in our bodies, we got to dig in in prayer. When things start hitting our home, we got to dig in in prayer. Make sure you have that relationship with God. Because you have been chosen by God. We've been chosen to suffer. We've been chosen to go through trials. We've been chosen to go through disappointment. We've been chosen to go through different hurts and different things in our lives. But God has chosen you for such a time as this. And don't you take advantage and don't you take for granted the spirit of God in your life. And there are times in our lives where the enemy tries to come up in our life and tries to disqualify us from the purpose and try to disqualify us to where we cannot fulfill what it is that God has given us to do because the enemy will cause different distractions to come into your life. And so he will allow different temptations to come into your life. Things that will try to take you out and take you off course from where it is that God is trying to take you because God cannot take an unclean vessel where you are supposed to go. So we have to know 
that when God is doing something in our lives, when God is doing something in us, we have to be sober. We have to be vigilant. We have to make sure that we recognize the enemy before he decides to strike in our lives. Because God will give us a warning. We will start seeing warnings and knowing that if things are going a little bit too good, the enemy is going to pick, pop his head up one way or another. The enemy is sure enough coming your way. But we have to make sure that we are sober and we are ready to be able to fight against the enemy and to be able to fight against whatever it is that the devil is trying to do in our lives. And we cannot, and we cannot, you may have your seats, but we cannot allow our flesh to disqualify us from the things that we have been chosen to do because we have been chosen for things and some things that's within our character does not go on the journey so we have to make sure that we allow God to purge us we allow God to get out those things that doesn't belong on the journey because if God has placed you in a place to where you have a certain assignment there are some things that doesn't go on the journey and so now God has to break you down in order to build you back up and so you wonder why you're going through different trials you wonder why you're going through this and you're going through that that's because God is trying to mold you and shape you and make you new and so we have to make sure that we endure that we don't we don't sit here and we don't we don't sit here and um we have to make sure we have to make sure that when God is moving in our lives that we say yes to God that when God is doing something in us that we say yes God I'll go yes God take this out of me God take out this attitude God take out this hurt take away this pain take away all of this stuff because God it don't go on the journey because if I'm going to be restored in God and if I'm going to have an assignment on my life I cannot fulfill the assignment broken I have to allow God to restore me in every area of my life I have to allow God to restore my mind and when God restores my mind he can restore my heart and once God restores my heart I can be restored my life can be restored my relationships can be restored that trust that unforgiveness can be restored because what God what the enemy tries to do he tries to make you think that you will never change and that you will never be anybody different but the devil is a liar the devil is a liar because God has the ability to change you. He has the ability to set you free. But we have to make sure that we are in the right posture to receive all that God has for us. And I want to be in the right posture to receive everything that God has for me. I don't want to let I don't want my assignment to be given to somebody else because I'm too chicken to find to to be able to fulfill my assignment. Because if you won't do it, God will raise up somebody else to be able to fulfill your assignment. But I don't know about you. I want to fulfill what God has given me to fulfill. For fulfill. But I thank God for who he is. I thank him for what he's doing in our lives. But we have to make sure that we are sober. Have to make sure that we are vigilant. Because when God gives us an assignment... We don't want to jeopardize that assignment that God has given us. We want to make sure that we be able to fulfill what it is that God has given us to fulfill. We want to make sure that we restore the people that God wants us to restore. Because there are people out there that are broken. There are people out there that are hurting. There are people out there that are on their last leg. To where they feel they can't hold on any longer. But they want to know about the God that you serve. The one that brought you out. The one that brought you out that knows that they can bring them out. Because you can be that kind of person that even encourage people. You can encourage people, but when you encourage people, it feels like people don't even appreciate your encouragement. Because God has you hidden. He has you hidden in such a way to where you feel that there's a lack of appreciation coming from people. That people don't appreciate the things that you do for them. They don't appreciate the encouragement. They don't appreciate the things that you've done for them. And that's the same way that God feels about us. Because there are some times that we forget about God. 
there's some times that we don't show appreciation for what God has given us. So we have to show that same appreciation to God. We have to learn how to appreciate God for who he is. Appreciate God for giving us that the house and the job and the car and the funds. Appreciate God. Because sometimes we can take the spirit of God for granted. We can take his love for granted. We can take what he's doing in our lives for granted. But we cannot take the spirit of God for granted. Because God don't owe us anything. He don't owe us anything. But we have to get to a place to where we stop, we stop, stop running from God. We have to stop running. And I offer to you Jesus. I offer to you an opportunity to stop running. Stop running from the call of God. You may stand, I'm closing. You may stand all over this building. I offer to you the plan of God for your life. God has a plan for your life. He has chosen you for such a time as this. This is your season of being hidden. But I want you to know that God has chosen you. That the favor of God is upon your life. Even you feel like that you don't have favor. He said, if the favor of God is on my life, why am I going through so much stuff? Why is my body being afflicted? Why am I going through so much pain? Why can't I get over this particular area? Because we have, you and I have to stop running from God and submit to God. We have to submit to what God is doing in our lives. And we have to say, God, I submit unto you. I say yes to you. I give you all of me. I don't just give you part of me. I give you all of me. I don't just give you some of me. I give you all of me.